Good morning, my creative friends. Let me try that again. Good morning, my creative friends, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. I am Dr. Minette Riordan. I am in my PJs. What time is it? It's about 10 till 7 on a Monday morning, and I'm super excited today to take just a few minutes to share a little bit about <clears throat> what's coming in December here on Painting in Your YouTube's Painting in Your PJs live. And I've been up forever, but my voice has not been up forever, so I'm a little bit froggy this morning. And I wanted to take some time to tell you what to expect this month on the channel and what I'm going to be doing. And I'm, I'm super excited about this project. So we just rela released a brand new self-care bundle for $29. The link is in the video. And uh, I'm going to stick it over here in the comments as well. So it's in a, a couple of different places. And one of the things that that bundle includes is 118 prompts for creative self-reflection. What I love about prompts and having a lot of prompts to choose from is that you may not like all the prompts. And um, I find that prompts are a way to get me going when I don't know what to say or what to write when I'm facing the blank page. So I find prompts an incredibly valuable part of my own creative practice. And I'm gonna go ahead and change my camera here and show you a few different things about what the bundle is gonna include. Some of you played along with me last month if you're brand new and just watching this, then throughout the month of November, I use some of the prompts from the 2023 Gratitude Journal for my art journaling inspiration. So that was a super fun one. Also in the bundle are 36 of our favorite Sacred Circle designs from our Sacred Circles membership. Here's a couple of the ones that are included. And what I love about this one is every single one of these has a powerful affirmation. Affirmations also make great creative prompts. So here's a couple of designs. This is one of my all-time favorite designs by Connor, my son. I have colored this one so many times. You'll notice that the designs are some of them are really simple some of them are a little more complex because we actually want you to you know have fun with the coloring and not get caught up um, in it being so detailed you give up also included in our brand new creative bundle are is uh, an introduction to the practice of zen tangle a mindful form of drawing i've been a certified zen tangle teacher for a decade now and then there's three bonus lessons on how to create these three gorgeous sacred circle designs so if you're curious about the practice of zentangle and how to create really gorgeous uh, zendalas as they're called but basically tangled sacred circle designs then there's over four hours of zentangle lessons We've also included one of my all-time favorite classes that I created, Color Coded Emotions, which is all about the connection between color and emotion and how we can use color, get all these things cleared up and out of my way, how can we use color to boost our mood? It's a super fun thing to do. And then there is this 118 journal prompt. So for only $29, there's three PDF printables and two courses with well over eight hours of instruction with yours truly. So throughout the month of December, I'm gonna pull from these journal prompts. I love this cute little uh, cover that my son Connor created. And I'm gonna work small, much smaller than I normally do. So I, purchased a class from the artist Tiffany Sharp over at Willa Wanders on Teachable. And she had this really fun idea. I've always wanted to make a circle book. And um, I bought myself for my big Black Friday purchase was a Sizzix paper cutter. And uh, 
she had some great ideas for making round books. So this is inspired by her. This is not going to be one of her books. Highly recommend her course. It's absolutely fantastic. I've watched most of the videos in that class. Again, that's Tiffany Sharp with an E on the end. And you can find her on Instagram or again uh, at Willa Wanders over on Teachable. And I used my Sizzix to cut these circles. I wish they were just a little bit bigger. I'm still looking for a die cut that will cut slightly bigger circles. And then I realized that Manette, challenge yourself to work small because the benefits of working small are that we can get it done quickly. And it is one of the principles of creative design, which is all about constraints, creative constraints that say we're actually more creative when we have constraint. One size, or excuse me, one constraint is size. Another constraint might be palette. So I love this blue and yellow is, a, is a, an example of a creative constraint. And this has some brown in it as well. So color might be a creative constraint. And not using every supply in the book could be a creative constraint as well. So I'm going to dive right in today and create a cover for my December 21 days of intuitive art. And as I go along, I'll share more about what I think intuitive art is and my creative practice of write, paint, and reflect. Write, paint, and reflect. And the thing that popped out at me right now was, what advice would you give to your younger self? I also liked, what is the best advice you have ever received? Those were both um, great prompts. I love the prompts in this book. I was just reading through them again this morning. And what do you look for when you're struggling? So we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to randomly select 21 prompts throughout the month of December. December, And I'm going to go live daily this month because I need the consistency. So here's the thing about intuitive art. Intuitive art means that you're creating from your heart, not your head. It is about the process, not the product. And it's about allowing your art to speak to you. And I love always starting with a little bit of writing, a little bit of painting, and then a little more writing or at least some quiet reflection time with my art. So we're going to play with this practice all month long. And so the first thing, of course, that I want to do is to create a cover for my journal that's going to guide me throughout the months. And if you want to work in a round journal like this one, what I recommend that you do is you get something round, uh, a dinner plate or a saucer are perfect, and that you just hand cut, hand draw, and hand cut your circles. And the secret is to fold your paper in half, so for example, if I were going to make a round piece out of this one, I would fold this in half and then I'm going to cut my circle, right? That one's not quite going to fit here, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this so then we can have that as a looking for something else round. I have so many round things on my desk, so I would let my circle hang over the edge of my page just a little bit. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more there. And then I would simply cut my circle out. Oh, and we're back to having problems with our focus again. And that's how you would create that round book. And give me just a second to see if we can fix this focus for a second. So I'm going to disappear for a second and I will be right back. At least my camera is going to disappear. You should probably be able to still see that. I don't know why it does this fussy thing where when I zoom in, it doesn't want to keep the focus. All right, there we go. That looks a lot better. 
Ooh, and isn't that a fun page? So I have a couple of different size circles. Did I tuck that other? I've been playing with different sizes of circles. And I think I'm going to have some fun with playing this month with different sizes. Like what if this one was a little flip book inside of this one? So we're going to have so much fun this month playing in the round. And as someone who loves working with circles, I am excited to create my first ever round journal. Thank you, Tiffany Sharp. And I'm going to start with, I just grabbed a few little bits of collage here to start with. And I really loved this little character here. This was from a children's book. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this little character out. And it felt so appropriate to this idea of write, paint, reflect, write, paint, reflect. So I've been trying to figure out, you know, what to call my morning creative routine. You know, I often call it a mapping process because it is a mindful art activation, if you will, but that wasn't quite right either. But I think when I landed on what are the, what are the steps that I follow? in my own creative practice. It's definitely that write, paint, reflect. And because this is a journal all about self-reflection, and whenever we're engaged in self-reflection, the idea is that there is some type of transformation that happens. And butterflies are such a wonderful symbolic image for transformation. Huh, I just had the thought. So one of the things that I love to do is to pick a word of the year. I'm still thinking about what my word is going to be for 2024. But sometimes I also love to have a um, where's my map medium? I also love to have a symbol of the year or an animal of the year that I'm going to travel with. And, and uh, interestingly, I'm getting ready to paint a big elephant because elephants have been on my mind, but a butterfly would be a great symbol for the year as well. And so in this journal of intuitive art, I'm going to let the prompts guide the practice, but what I can tell you right now is that I'm going to use a combination of collage and painting, and that paint might be acrylic, it might be watercolor, it might be all the things. So I decided not to limit, so I kind of like this, almost looks like a mountain scene here, I decided not to limit the supplies that I was using, I thought about doing, you know, uh, a month of watercolor. And that just all of a sudden makes me bored. So I think one of the things that I love about mixed media art is it's mixed media. We get to use all the different media. All right, so I'm trying to start to have a little bit of a vision of what I'm creating here, maybe a little funky landscape feel. And when you're working in the round like this, one of the tips when you're doing collage this way is to not worry about the edges, like let things flow over the edges. I love this. I shared this on one of the, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. But, sorry about that. One of the, uh, I shared this on one of the videos during November. This is a process by my friend Mary Correa here on, Inst on uh, YouTube, uh, Mary Correa Studios. I'm going to type her name over here in the chat, Mary Korea Studios on Instagram and she shows how to make this 
gorgeous collage fodder using muslin or cheesecloth. I think it was cheesecloth and Sharpie and matte medium to create your own collage material on muslin. And I absolutely love that process. And so I'm just playing here for a few minutes, maybe figuring out where things want to go. I'm thinking I'm going to want that butterfly kind of hanging off the edges of that journal. I really love this piece. I think I want more of that and less of the green. And I'm going to want to get some color down in the, the background, I think, as well. But really love this, feels resonant of this idea of self-reflection. So that's starting to come together. I'm very intrigued by this palette of this butterfly which is kind of similar to this palette in this piece of art here. This one's a little pinkier, but it's kind of all going together pretty well. I'm wondering if I want one more of these green hills in the background. Okay, so I want to get some color down on the background and I don't want to spend a ton of time with the, the color. So I've got my Derwent Ink Tense pencils here and I just don't want this to be white underneath, right? And I'm not even going to see this color underneath all of that collage but I just want to get a base layer of color down and I want a bigger brush. I love Derwent's and by the way I cut these pages out of just some inexpensive artist loft from Michael's watercolor paper. And when I'm playing like this and trying something new, I don't worry too much about the paper, but I knew I was going to want to have something a little sturdier that I would be able to layer up a little bit. I think I'm going to bring in a little more of these other colors. I'm still just pulling some ink off of my Derwent sticks over here. Ink tents are one of my absolutely favorite, favorite things to play with. And this one ended up being a little pinkier than I wanted it to be because remember our butterfly is that nice red. So I'm just going to push that back a little bit and maybe bring in a little, yeah, that looks better a little color. So treating this very much like watercolor, just putting some abstract paint down, letting those flow and blend on the page a little bit. Did want just a little bit of that yellow. All right, so you can see my page is starting to, to buckle there, totally okay and the colors are starting to separate and do some very interesting things. I'm loving that. I love this kind of flow here, but it might be maybe just a little more than I want. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this with my dryer, get it nice and dry, and see about adding my collage. I've got it super, super wet, so it may be a little bit challenging here to get it as dry as I want quickly, but we'll see. And once it's dry, then I can see it better and I can see where I want 
maybe a little more color in there so you can see it's not completely dry. I'm thinking maybe I want a little of a different darker blue in here as well. And then I'm going to put a little bit of matte medium over this to seal it so that when I glue my collage down it stays, the color stays put. And that matte medium also will activate the color of the Derwents, and I always love how that looks. So again, you can use your matte medium to activate the Derwents instead of water or in addition to water. Okay, so let's get a look here again at where we were going with all of this. I'm going to get this background bits down and then we'll add our final little details. Kind of an interesting landscape looking piece here. And I'm noticing where this piece is. What I really like is the dark, but I might have to come back and manually add some of that dark. All right, I'm, I may cover this whole thing with matte medium, but I'm going to start just with a glue stick so that I can get things positioned where I want them, get the edges trimmed, and then I can always come back. And like this big piece of fabric here definitely will adhere better with matte medium than it will with this glue stick, but this will get us started. And what I love about doing intuitive collage first with a glue stick, even if I choose to add paint to it later, is that it gives me some freedom to move things around. I'm wondering if I don't even want that piece on there. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh, this is interesting. If I put this over the top, see this is exactly why we use the glue stick because it allows us to move things. And then I get interesting color behind there and then I get to use more of this piece that I love. Okay, starting to come together. So again, my goal over the next 21 days is to share these prompts with you and share more about what intuitive art is, what the benefits of intuitive art are, and to be in my own creative self-care here at the end of the year. So I tend to often spend quite a bit of time looking back over the year at that has just almost past and thinking about what do I want to be the same? What do I want to be different? What did I learn this year? But I'm going to do that through some different prompts and I'm going to figure out, uh, yes, Arlene, good morning. This is definitely being recorded live on my channel. You'll be able to find it live on my channel. And this is my cover for my 21 days of intuitive art and self-reflection for the month of December. And starting tomorrow, I will be showing the whole process of write, paint, reflect. What does that look like? And a lot of the reflection that I'm doing is happening as I go here, right? So a lot of that reflection is happening as I go, as I'm engaging in this intuitive practice. I'm paying attention to the colors, to the symbols, to what's the story that is unfolding? What's the story that is unfolding? 
because what matters here is not the the product of this piece good morning what matters is not the product of this piece but what matters is the story that it's telling me as I get going okay so now I am going to trim the edges of this and they've got a lot of glue on them so I got to remember to clean my scissors off all right so if you're just joining me here's what I'm up to so throughout the month of December over the rest of the year I'm going to be writing painting and reflecting using intuitive art and getting new glue sticks as a form of self-reflection as we near the end of the year and I'm going to be working from a brand new set of 118 journal prompts that we just created and that are for sale in our creative self-care bundle available right now on my Simplero site for only $29. And there's a link to that in the description of this video. And the other fun thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to be working in the round inspired by Tiffany Sharp and her class that I just bought. So this is uh, inspired by her round journal class. And I think I'm going to bind it at the end, which I've never done before. Usually when I make journals, I tend to bind them up front and work at them but I'm work with them but I'm really feeling like this one I want to work in as I go and bind at the end and uh, we'll see we'll see how it we'll see how it goes but I'm, I'm super excited about this I think somewhere in here I want to write that this is 21 days of self-reflection or December 2023 self-reflection journal actually that sounds better This is going to be my 2023 self-reflection journal. And I don't need that writing to show up a lot. And then I'm just going to put my initials in here. So this helps me remember uh, when I stumble across this journal sometime in the future exactly what I'm working on and I'm super happy with this page almost. So I love this black down here and uh, that didn't quite or it has some white on the original image so I'm feeling like I want to blacken up the edges of this just a little bit more and that maybe I'm going to come in here with a little bit of shadow along the, the edge of this as well and I'm going to use matte medium over the top of this because this paper isn't sealed and if I use water to activate this I am looking for an older brush that I don't mind getting matte medium on so matte medium is a great way to seal images and it also is great for activating Derwent ink tense pencils. That might actually need a little paint or a little ink or something to just blacken it up completely. And I'm really liking these colors. So I am using for the color on this one today just because they were right here on my table one of my favorite tools and I've been playing with them a lot lately are the Derwent ink tense blocks and I think this just needs a little bit of shadow along the top there That's actually more color than I wanted. So one of my 
essential tools in my studio here is always baby wipes. They are genius for removing paint and moving color around on an image. So now it feels like this piece is a little more integrated here. And I'm kind of feeling like this whole thing needs a layer of matte medium over the top to just seal it and protect the images. So I'm just going to come in with, where did my scraper go? There it is. And put a little layer of matte medium over the top of all of this to seal that paper in. So as I'm, you know, accidentally getting paint or spilling water, it's going to protect my images and it's going to keep everything stuck down really nicely as well. So that is going to be the cover of my reflection journal. All right, so I'm liking this. Still thinking I could even have a little shading up there. So I'm just looking at what else is missing. What does this need? And throughout the month we're, hi Blanca, good morning. I wanted to get uh, December jump started today with what I'm going to be up to this month. And I'm going to be working in a round journal inspired by Tiffany Sharp has a new class about making round journals. That's absolutely fabulous. So I was super inspired to create in the round. And we have a brand new uh, creative self-care bundle and series of prompts. So I'm going to be creating a journal using these brand new 118 self-reflection prompts in this round journal. Okay, so this feels really good for my cover of my journal. And even though I'm deciding to work small this month, that doesn't mean it always takes less time. I think my hope is usually when I work small that um, I'll get things done, pages done quicker. But the truth is sometimes working small is even more challenging. <clears throat> so be mindful of that, right? Be mindful of how much time do you want to spend? How much time do you have to spend? It just feels like this just needs a little bit of color just light along the top there for some separation. All right. And the other thing that I'm doing this month is that I'm not binding my pages ahead of time. I'm going to work in this journal one page at a time and bind it at the end. So we'll see how that process is going to go. I may change my mind part of the way through the process, but I'm super excited about where we're going to go. So let's go ahead and dive in. So one of the prompts that I really loved in here, there were a, there's a lot of them in this new series of journal prompts. And the link to purchase these prompts is in the description of this video. We put together an amazing end of year self-care bundle for only $29 with over eight hours of video and three wonderful PDFs for you. And um, one of them was, what is the best advice you ever received? What is the best advice you ever received? And the first thing that popped into my head was my cousin Vicky. Um, when I was pregnant with my first child, you know, and she took me shopping and helped me make a baby registry. And she's the four words that she said to always remember that this too shall pass, that no matter what stage that the, the kid was in, whether it was, you know, not sleeping or teething or whatever, that if you just waited three days, this too shall pass. 
And I realize that that philosophy of this too shall pass happens pretty much all the time with a lot of things, with emotions, right? So I'm going to start with my write, paint, reflect process with doing some writing real quick. So my memory, and I'm just using pencil and I'm going to paint over this, is of my cousin Vicky. And she and uh, her husband had had kids. They were already quite a bit older than my kids um, by five or six years, maybe even more. And so she'd already been through all of this twice and she was just so full of great advice. Um, and her many words of advice, you know, I have a lot of gratitude for her support. And literally walking me up and down, the, and this was Connor's 24, almost 25, um, walking me up and down the aisles of Babies R Us, helping me create a baby registry of here's what you need, here's what you don't need. Um, gratitude for her support and insights around parenting. And her four little words this too shall pass. And when we think about writing and self reflection, so often we think that we have to spend hours writing. Some of you may love to write and journal. Some of you may think, oh, I don't like to write or I'm not good a good writer. So this isn't for anyone else's eyes other than mine. And the point of the writing is that it takes us deeper into our own intuitive knowing. And once I've planted those words, I am free to cover up those words. And I'm having fun today with collage through the end of the year Arlene it's not we're not uh, trying to say oh you got to buy this by tomorrow so it will be on sale through the end of the year for $29 and there is so much juicy goodness in it I'm really proud of what we created my my husband and I work pretty hard on this one and I'm thinking I'm going to let that heart stick out. So I'm definitely feeling a little constrained by the size of the page. I don't usually work this small. I think I want some of that fun texture in there. And let's get some more words in there. So my first step is just to come in here and cover up I think I need to cover up all that paper. So I had shared at the beginning of the video that my Black Friday fun purchase for myself was uh, a big, a bigger Sizzix. I had a little one that I gave away when we left California and because uh, I never used it. And I wanted to be able to cut circles because I love working in the round. And so I'm still looking for a bigger die cut for cutting those circles. And how I started was I folded a piece of watercolor page in half and then used the Sizzix to cut it. But you could 100% create this round journal by hand. And tomorrow morning, I will talk more about doing that. But Blanca, I did show um, an example also of how I cut out the circles. All right, I'm just grabbing some more little bits of collage fodder here because I have piles of them everywhere. And as I'm creating, I'm continuing to think about this prompt of this too shall pass. And I'm thinking I'm going to want those words on the cover. And I'm feeling like maybe just 
a few little more bits of collage and remember when you're working in the round especially if you're new to working in the round what I want you to think about is just create with collage over the edges because we can come back and trim those edges that are hanging over later so don't be constrained by the page itself I don't know what I created this with but I love these marks this is a little handmade collage material here And I also found this little birdie. And when I think about the, the theme of this too shall pass, you know, animals don't hold on to things like we humans do, right? We don't hold on to, they don't hold on to feelings and emotions. They know that the sun is going to rise again. They know that the weather is going to change and the leaves are going to come out again. So I'm thinking this little bird really is going to match the theme of my page. I love that this is going to have this little heart sticking out, which also reminds me of my cousin Vicki and her gracious sharing of information. And I'm noticing that not intentionally, but just kind of intuitively, I've been gravitating towards a very similar palette here of this sort of orangey red and some gold and a little bit of green. So just noticing already that these match. And I'm going to talk also as we go along about how I'm working on these pages to make sure that they fit in their book. So this is not a spread, right, in my book. So we'll continue to focus on all of that as we go along this week. I'm going to grab my scissors, trim up the edges. Once I get my base collage down, then I can see, I want to be able to see what that roundness looks like. And I want to get some color in here. And I'm just going to go in with some acrylic paints. And because I'm going in with acrylic paints, I don't need to worry too much about making sure that matte medium is dry. So I'm going to get some of my favorite Amsterdam turquoise blue and maybe some white. And because I'm really going to want this bird to stand out, but I'm thinking I want some more of this gold color or maybe not. Let's see. Let's just get some some color down. I'm going to put it right on the page. And I have both my spreads open here because if I do have extra paint, I'm happy to just get paint down on the other side as well because it'll become the basis of another page. And I'm going to continue just working with this scraper. I don't want to lose all of this fun collage material. So by the time I'm done, I will have finished this page as well as, or finished the page I'm working on, as well as have a nice background down for this next page. And it'll still be in the same palette. Again, I'm going to come in here just with that baby wipe and I'm going to soften up. I'm going to push everything back without losing all of the texture. That's what I love about the baby wipe. So now it feels like a cohesive page. Everything's kind of starting to flow together a little bit better. Maybe even lighten that up just a little bit more. I 
that little bit of that muslin texture in there. And it's amazing how just putting some of those thin layers all of a sudden create a page that feels so much more cohesive than when I started. I even kind of love how this piece is flowing into the heart. So I did my writing. As I'm painting, I'm also reflecting. And this is a little bit of a fragmented heart, right? Or if I were to redraw the heart on the page, what would that look like? But, you know, our hearts often get broken. And so when we're in the midst of heartbreak, whether that is from loss of a friend or loss of a loved one or a getting let go of a job or in my case, you know, moving away from a place I love to another place I love didn't minimize the grief I felt when I moved here. So I'm loving this and also what I'm loving is look what happens when I come over here and now I've already got this butterfly and this heart peeking out. So this is gonna be a super fun project. I'm excited about it. I'm gonna go live daily at generally at 7 a.m. Mountain Time this month because I want to work through this project a little bit differently and they may end up being a little bit shorter episodes. I will still be, except on Wednesdays, I will do my evening live per usual but I'll be here more often during the month of December because I'm committed to this 21 days of self-reflection and really thinking about this year, what's happened this year, and what have I learned, what lessons have I learned from this year? All right, so I'm gonna fussy cut this bird out. And I think it's really important that at the end of the year, we pause to look at lessons learned. And so I start to then think about this advice of this too shall pass. And I can look at what were the things that happened this year that felt challenging or different. It's actually it was a pretty good year. Last year was a much, much more challenging year. Emotionally. And one of the things I'm present to is that I worked really hard. I put in a lot of hours this year, a lot of new content creation, especially with our new program, Your Midlife Renaissance and our mythical makeovers that we did this year, but now everything is created. And so the theme for me next year, and I'm wondering if this might be my word of the year, is mastery. Like I put, I love the new, I know this about myself, and sometimes I struggle with the slowing down to make things better. So I'm present to, okay, having to put in so much time creating that this too shall pass. And now I need to put my time towards making everything even better, including my health. One of the things that I've been focused on this year, kind of haphazardly, is self-care, my own physical self-care. And if I treated that with the same discipline and consistency that I treat my art and my business, what might be possible? So again, I'm not just sitting here creating in a vacuum, but I'm thinking about this prompt of this too shall pass, this too shall pass. All right. Oh, I love that. I love that. Did um, Were you watching the movie or were you watching the course from 
last year. That's so funny, Blanca, that you brought that up because uh, I'm just in the process. We're going to offer that again in January, but it's going to be all new. And uh, I'm super, super excited about it. I just got the new content out outlined and we're going to be offering that secret garden class again in January in an all new format. And last year's class was so amazing for sure. All right, so I have to fussy cut out this little bit and I'm pretty sure my exacto knife is over on let's see if it got piled in here oh there's one awesome there's my exacto knife and my self-healing mat awesome youtube many different versions i love that i just purchased um alice in wonderland and uh, so one of the things I want to do next year is to create a course and uh, there will also be an in-person retreat with my friend Leslie focused on Alice in Wonderland. So I'm super excited about that. But I'm also excited about just having the opportunity to not constantly be creating something new, which frees me up to make the things I do have even better. All right, we're getting there. It's funny, I'm talking about how much time I put into things and fussy cutting takes time, but the impact of it makes a big difference. And one of my first creative certifications was in Soul Collage way back in 2012. And it was where I learned about this practice of cutting images away from their backgrounds and placing them on new backgrounds helps us to tell our story instead of the story of the image itself. All right, so I'm loving this page. I think on the heart up here, it's going to say this too shall pass. And this little birdie is going to need some black outlines around it to make it stand out. Which version of Alice in Wonderland? There's so many versions. I love the, the cartoon version from my my own childhood. Just trying to figure out where I want this little bird to go and if I want more white behind it so the bird pops out a little bit more. I can get attached to the backgrounds and sometimes it's all about letting go. This too shall pass. I have to release my attachment. So even the painting practice becomes another introspective connection and way of reflecting about what am I holding on to instead of allowing it to pass. What am I holding on to? instead of just allowing it to pass. So I can still see all the, the collage bits under there, but now I can also see that bird a lot more. So I'm gonna hit this quickly with the dryer and then I'm gonna attach that bird with some matte medium. And it doesn't matter that I can see any of my own handwriting. It doesn't matter what the prompt is that uh, I started with. This is about the experience. And so I can let go of the writing. I can let go of 
I'm going to start with the matte medium on here. I can let go of the writing, I can let go of the prompt, and I just want to hold on to the learning, right? I want to hold on to the learning and those four little words of this too shall pass, this too shall pass. And I want my bird to lie nice and flat, so that's why I got the matte medium on the back of the bird first. And then I'm going to also cover that bird with the matte medium. And I'm noticing the blue paint on the edge of my scraper is coming off on my bird. So I'm going to be mindful of that because a little blue on the bird is fine, but I don't want it to end up all blue. And this looks like a little white crown sparrow. So my husband and I are, he's more into it than I am. I love going with him, but we love bird watching. And sparrows are one of the most common birds around that we see in our gardens. And this little white crowned sparrow has an absolutely gorgeous song. All right. I'm going to get this good and dry, and then I think I'm going to add a little bit of shading here. Let's see if I make this a little yellower. I was trying to get rid of that shine, it's hard to do. And as I was sitting there drying that, what I'm thinking about is what a, a beautiful metaphor for life is that this, sh this too shall pass. Everything changes, we change. According to science, like every part of our body renews itself um, periodically, like our cells, right? You know, our skin, everything is constantly changing and passing. And so those little four words, this too shall pass, are really important. I'm thinking what I want here is just a little water-soluble graphite. And I just want a little bit of that shadow. May not even need it everywhere, but I want my bird to stand out just a little bit more. And if that's not dark enough, I'll get my Stabilo. Let's come in here with a tiny brush. Let's see if we can activate that graphite. Sometimes brushes aren't scrubby enough, like I want to be able to really so I tend to be really hard on my brushes. Yeah, I think I'm going to want a... Let's try this one. There we go, that one's a little darker. Just want a little drop shadow in a few places to, again, just help that birds stand out a little bit more from the background. Yeah, that one's better. Doesn't take a lot, just that little bit. Little bit of water, not too much water. All right. 
Oh, thank you, Blanca. I appreciate you. Yeah, end of the year reflection is so important. And what are the prompts that I want to consider is what is your definition of success? And I think that's such a great question to ask in every area of our life, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. What is your definition of success? Okay, I keep sticking my hand in something over here. Feels like a puddle of glue. Love starting my morning with painty fingers as well. All right, I'm feeling pretty happy with this little bird. And I want to make sure I get those words on there. And I'm thinking that I want to bring this heart back a little bit as well. Oh, I just got some new ink. So maybe I'm going to open up those inks and darken up the edges of this heart just a little bit, but I can also just do that with this graphite. And I don't need to see the whole heart, but I'm just imagining, well, okay, so the cool thing about water-soluble graphite, I'm going to bring back the whole heart and then I can decide If I don't like it, I can wash it away. But I think I like being able to see the, the whole heart there since this is about reflection, self-reflection. And the reason that we spend time in self-reflection is because the better we know ourselves, the better decisions we make for our lives, the better boundaries we put into place, the more that we live authentically all right definitely like that little heart sticking out there and now i'm thinking maybe i want even some more pops of color i'm, I'm not usually like a, a grungy girl um, I tend to like bright colors, but I'm kind of enjoying this more grungy look today. It'll probably all change tomorrow. Okay, the last thing to do is to get the words, this too shall pass, onto my page in my handwriting. Because this is the lesson that I took away from today's reflection about the best advice that I ever received. So now I have my words on there. So it was a productive day today. I got more done than I thought I would in this last hour. And this is what I love about things sticking out, popping out of my journal. I'm probably going to cut off that little piece of that branch but we have our butterfly and our heart. We have our little, little person in self-reflection here. And I let the colors in this butterfly kind of guide the reflection. And so even here, we're seeing that sort of flow over. So I will be back tomorrow for day two of 21 days of intuitive art and write, paint, reflect. I hope you will come back and join me live or catch the replay. As always, thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful for you. And uh, be sure to click like on the video if you like what I shared today. And I will see you guys all very soon. Thanks so much for being here. If you caught the replay, put hashtag replay in the comments so that I know you stopped by. In uh, just deep gratitude and appreciation for all of you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.